I want to talk about the transfigured church. The transfigured, the transformed, the transfigured, the transformed, the changed, the revolutionized, the different church. The Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I looked at this text and I said to myself, I said, self, aren't you glad to be one of those whom the Lord has added to the church? It's nice to be one of those. It's nice to be on the Lord's adding side rather than the Lord's subtracting side. Yeah. Raph and I had a discussion about scripture the other day, and in the text we, we were talking about how, in our discussion, we talked about how one day, one day people are going to stand before the Lord, but not just people, church people, yeah. are going to, notice I didn't say Christians, church people are going to stand before the Lord and declare how great they have been. I prophesied in your name. I sung in your name. I preached every sermon in your name. I shouted in your name. I witnessed in your name. And the Lord is going to say, depart from me. But what about my works? He was, he's going to say, your work was that of iniquity. What are you trying to say to me, God? God's going to say to some church people one of these days, I never knew you. I'm so glad today that I'm talking to people, not just people who, the, who, who, who knows the Lord, but I'm glad to be talking to some people that the Lord knows. He adds, he adds, the Lord is in the business of joining together. Yeah. And that's why he says in Matthew 19 and 6, what therefore God has joined together. Amen. Let no man put asunder. God is in the business of uniting. That's why David says in Psalms 86, 11, he says, unite my heart, God, that I might fear your name. Yeah. Want to fear God's name. The transformed church is the church that fears God's name. Yeah. The transfigured, the transformed, the change, the revolutionary church, the, the modern day church, the great church is the church that fears the name of God. God is in the business of bringing together so as to form a whole. The Bible teaches togetherness from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis chapter 49, verse 1, Jacob called unto his sons and says, Gather yourselves together. In Exodus 8, 19, verse 8, Exodus 19, verse 8, and all the people answered together. You know, there's nothing like an answer together. Like, like let the church say amen. amen. I mean, there's something about an answer together. Let the church say amen again. Amen. I mean, whatever you do together, there is power. There is strength. When you do what you do together. And that's why in Exodus 19 and 8, it says, All of the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken. Oh, my God, if you want to talk about a changed church, you wait until all, look, does it not say all? You wait until all of the people in the church come together and say, All that the Lord has spoken. Not some of the things 
that he has spoken, but all that he has spoken, we will do. We will love one another as he has spoken. We will treat one another as he has spoken. We will live for God as he has spoken. We will evangelize as he has spoken. We will make disciples as he has spoken. We will give our tithes and our offerings as he has spoken. Numbers chapter 10, verse 7, Moses says, The congregation is to be, to, is to be gathered together. Some people say, well, I can stay home. He says, no. The congregation is to be gathered together. Because where two or three are gathered together in my name, that's where Jesus is. Proverbs 22, 2, Solomon says, the rich and the poor meet together. And the Lord is maker of them all in the transformed church. Everybody comes together. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 13. Isaiah said, let us stand together. That's what a transformed church does. It stands together. In Amos chapter 3, verse 3, asks the question, can two walk together? Except they agree. Matthew 18, 20, Jesus says, where you are gathered together, just two or three. That's why those who come to prayer service is just two or three. But the spirit of the Lord comes because he says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. Change takes place. Transformation takes place. Church happens when there's two and three coming together in his name. And so the Lord brings us together. The Lord unites. The Lord joins. And the Lord enjoins. The Lord adds to the church. He records this text. Luke, in this, in this, in this book of Acts, he records the early church's state of infancy. He records the early church state of innocence. There is a song that, that Luther Vandross put out just before uh, he died. The song was uh, entitled Dance With My Father Again. And in that song, Luther talks about his relationship uh, with his father was an innocent relationship. And God took his father, and he could no longer dance with his father. There he was, innocent. Meaning fear, meaning bringing my whole heart to this relationship. That's what God wants with the church, an innocent Somebody who's willing to bring all that you got to the relationship. Not, not hang-ups and not baggage, but just come, as the song says, just as I am, innocent and without one plea. Lord, I come to thee. Lord, I come. So what makes this church such a great church? What makes this innocent church such a church that it would cause God to add 3,000 souls. I looked at this and I said, God, what is so important about this church that you would add? I mean, I mean, I get excited when five people come. I mean, when one come, I'm happy, but when three or four come, I'm like, wow. But in the text, 3,000 people join church on one Sunday. Well, first of all, you can't join church. You can't join church. You can't join church. You can only join something that somebody owns. The church belongs to God. Yeah. And so you don't join the church. When God is ready, he adds you to the church. And so he adds 3,000. The people who join today, they leave. But the people that the Lord adds, they stay. 
That's what's wrong. It's too many people joining. You join on your own, but God adds you to the church. When you join, you leave. But when you're added to the church, you cannot leave. You can't leave your ministry when you've been added to the ministry. You can't stop preaching when you've been added to the pulpit. You can't stop being a deacon when you've been added to the deacon ministry or to the diaconate ministry. But when you join, you leave when you get ready. The Lord, I'm glad that the Lord adds. Anybody been added? I'm not talking to people who join. I'm not talking about people who, who like what they heard and join. I'm not talking about people who like what they saw and join. I'm not talking about people who like what the building looked like and join. I'm talking about people who couldn't help themselves. Every now and then somebody comes down this aisle.